So you hit 48 hours fasting and you're wondering, am I burning fat or did my body just give up? Here's the problem. At 48 hours, half the people feel like superheroes. The other half feel like they're dying. Same timeline, same no food, completely opposite results. Why? Because something flips at 48 hours that most people never see coming. Your body makes a choice between two modes, fat burn mode, where hunger fades, energy stabilizes, and your organs run on stored fuel like they were designed to, or stress mode, where cortisol spikes, fat burning stalls, and every hour feels worse than the last. The weird part? You can't tell which one you're in just by how you feel. There's actually something happening inside your organs right now that reveals the truth. And whether you're at hour 36, hour 48, or thinking about trying this, you need to know what flipped, what each organ is doing, and the one thing that determines which mode you're in. Because at 48 hours, your body already decided. Let's go inside and see what it chose. Quick reminder, at 36 hours, your body started the fuel switch. Liver began making ketones. Brain took its first sip and went, huh, not bad. Fat cells cracked open the vault. But here's the thing, 36 hours was the start. 48 hours is where the switch locks in, or doesn't. Most people quit right when their body was about to stop complaining. They hit hour 40, feel a weird wave of cold or fatigue, and think, this isn't working. Meanwhile, inside, the liver's like, give me two more hours and we're golden. So what actually completes in those final 12 hours? What makes 48 the point of no return? Let's go inside. By hour 48, three major shifts have locked in. First, the liver. At 36 hours, it was warming up the ketone factory. By 48, it's at full capacity. Ketone production has peaked. Your liver is now churning out fuel packets like an assembly line that finally hit its stride producing ketones at 240 millimoles per liter, about 10 times higher than baseline. It's not making glucose anymore, that warehouse is empty. It's refining fat into clean burning energy. The liver basically put up a sign, ketone factory open 24 seven. Second, the brain. At 36 hours, your brain was cautiously trying ketones like, I guess I'll eat this if I have to. By 48, it's running 30 to 40% on ketones, not just surviving on them, performing. The fog, gone. The weird calm focus, that's ketones. Your brain went from a sugar addict to a fat fuel convert in two days, and it's not looking back. Third, fat cells. By 48 hours, your fat tissue is supplying over 80% of your body's energy. Not water, not muscle, Fat. The stuff you've been trying to burn for months is finally pouring out like a broken faucet. Your muscles are using it. Your heart loves it. Even your liver's using fat to make more ketones. You're literally running on last month's pizza. The fuel dominance flip is complete. Your body is no longer burning what you ate yesterday. It's burning you in the good way. But here's where it gets interesting. Not everyone feels the same at 48 hours. Some people feel amazing, clear, light, energized. Others feel like they got hit by a truck. Same biology, different outcome. Why? Because at 48 hours, your body faces a choice. Path one, calm transition. Cortisol stays stable. Ketones flow steady. Hunger fades. You feel surprisingly fine maybe even good. Path two, stress spiral. Cortisol spikes, fat burn gets blocked, hunger screams louder, you feel cold, shaky, miserable. Here's the key, what you feel at 48 hours isn't random, it's feedback. Your body is telling you whether the switch worked or whether something interfered. And most of the time, the interference was you. So how do you know which path you're on? Three signals. One, hunger timing. If it peaked at hour 36 and faded by 45, you're in. If it's screaming at 48, cortisol's blocking fat burn. Two, temperature. 
Slightly cool but steady, normal. Shaking cold, stress mode. Three, mental state. Calm focus, ketones working. Anxiety or thick fog, cortisol override. Your organs are reporting their status. Now you can read it. Let's check in on each system at 48 hours and see what they're actually doing. Liver manager. The liver's running at peak ketone output. No glycogen left to ration. No glucose left to hand out. Just fat coming in, ketones going out. It's like a refinery that finally stopped getting shipments of crude oil, so it switched to drilling its own reserves. The liver is basically holding a clipboard like, ketone production, maxed out. No turning back now. If you give it carbs at this point, it doesn't know what to do. It'll shut the whole ketone line down, reboot insulin, and you'll feel like trash. So the liver's message at 48, don't mess this up. Brainy, your brain has officially adapted. At hour 24, it was pouting like a kid without candy. At hour 36, it tried a ketone and went, fine, I'll eat it. By 48, it's running smooth. 30 to 40% of its fuel is ketones now. No crashes, no brain fog, just steady, clean energy. The brain's even releasing more BDNF, a growth factor that sharpens focus and protects neurons. Translation, your brain is not just surviving, it's thriving. Some people call this mental clarity. Your brain calls it, finally, some decent fuel. Fat. Your fat cells have gone from clothes for business to everything must go. Insulin, the security guard that kept the vault locked, is off duty. Fat is pouring out. Triglycerides are breaking down into fatty acids and glycerol. The fatty acids ship to muscles and liver. The glycerol sent to the liver to make a tiny bit of glucose for cells that still need it. By 48 hours, your fat tissue is donating energy like it's a charity drive. And honestly, it's got plenty to give. If you've got body fat, you've got weeks of fuel. At 48 hours, the fat's just getting started. Cortisol alarm. Your adrenal glands are still on duty. Cortisol's up, about double baseline. Adrenaline's buzzing. But here's the thing, that's not bad. Cortisol at 48 hours is your body's natural coffee. It keeps your blood sugar stable. It keeps you alert. It signals fat cells to keep releasing energy. It's only a problem if you add more stress on top. If you sleep poorly, freak out, or overtrain, cortisol shoots through the roof. That's when fat burn slows. That's when you feel awful. But if you stay calm, cortisol stays controlled. It's your ally, not your enemy. The alarm's on, but it's not panicking, unless you give it a reason to. Let's talk about the four ways people accidentally ruin the 48-hour turning point. Mistake one, breaking the fast with carbs. You hit 48 hours, feel a little weak, and think, I'll just have a snack. Bad move. Your insulin's been rock bottom for two days. Your cells are ultra sensitive now. You eat a cookie and insulin spikes like a rocket. Ketone production, shut down. Fat burning, paused. You just told your liver, never mind, go back to carb mode. And now you feel worse than before. If you're going to break a 48 hour fast, do it gently, not with sugar. Mistake two, overtraining or overstressing. Some people think, I'm fasting, so I should also crush a workout to burn more fat. No. At 48 hours, your body's already working hard to maintain balance. Throwing in a brutal hit session or a stressful meeting, that spikes cortisol even higher. Your body goes from calm fat burn mode to panic mode. And in panic mode, fat burning slows. Light movement, great. A walk, some stretching, easy stuff, perfect. But don't treat day two like a training montage. Mistake three, ignoring electrolytes. By 48 hours, you've peed out three to five liters of water and 2,000 milligrams of sodium. Low sodium means low blood volume. Low blood volume means dizziness, headaches, and your body cranking up cortisol to compensate. People feel awful, assume fasting is the problem, and quit. When really, they just needed salt. A pinch of salt and water can be the difference between feeling like death and feeling fine. 
Your organs don't need food at 48 hours, but they do need minerals. Mistake four, misreading the signals. You feel cold. You think, my metabolism died. Nope, you're just running on fat, which burns a bit cooler than carbs. Plus, low insulin drops water weight, which drops body temp slightly. You feel a little tired. You think, I'm in starvation mode. Nope, your metabolism is fine. Studies show it stays stable or even increases slightly at 48 hours. You're just adapting. Every weird feeling gets misread as failure, when actually, it's progress. Your body's not broken, it's just doing something it hasn't done in a while, and you're interpreting the signals wrong. So what happens if you don't sabotage? What unlocks at 48 hours when the switch completes cleanly? First, hunger disappears. Ghrelin, your hunger hormone, peaks around hour 36. By 48, it drops 50% below baseline. People report the weirdest thing. They stop thinking about food. The stomach's still sending the occasional complaint, but it's background noise now. Your brain's like, we're good, actually. Because ketones suppress appetite, and your body finally has enough ketones to feel satisfied. Second, mental clarity peaks. That calm, focused feeling people talk about? This is where it shows up. Your brain's running on clean fuel. No glucose spikes. No crashes. Just steady energy. Some people say it feels like the volume on background noise got turned down. Everything's sharper. Third, fat burn becomes automatic. You're not trying to burn fat anymore. You just are. Your liver's making ketones. Your muscles are using fat. Your brain's using ketones. It's a system now, not a struggle. This is what fasting was designed for. Not suffering, not willpower. Just your body switching to the fuel it stored for exactly this situation. And once the switch locks in at 48 hours, it gets easier from here. Not harder. Here's what most people miss. 48 hours isn't when your body gives up. It's when it stops asking permission. If you felt strange at 48 hours, good. That was adaptation. If you felt clear, even better. That was completion. Either way, you just watched your biology do exactly what it was built to do. The liver didn't fail, the brain didn't shut off, the fat didn't hoard itself. Every system did its job. And here's what most people miss about what happens next. By 48 hours, your body's not just burning fat. It's learning how long it can fast. It's testing its own metabolic flexibility. The longer you go from here, the better it gets at this. But even if you stop at 48, you just prove something. Your body can run without food. It can switch fuels. It can adapt. And now it knows that. So does your brain. One more thing. 48 hours is also when your body decides how far it can go. Some people cruise into day three feeling unstoppable. Others need to refeed and try again. Both are fine. The point is, you saw the switch happen. If this helped you understand what your body's actually doing at 48 hours, the next video breaks down the one fasting mistake that blocks fat loss even when insulin's low. You'll see it right here.